In this video, Charlie, we're going to look at finding out short sellers' information, what information we can find out, and how useful it can be to make our trading decisions. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. Okay, so if we're trading equities, we might want to know information about how many people are selling short, what they could do if it starts to rally, whether there's going to be a potential trade opportunity from an excessive amount of short or there's not many people short in it. We want to know all this information to potentially add into our trading plan that might give us an extra edge when taking a trade. We'll talk about those in a second, but what sort of things can we find out and where can we go to find these kind of things? So First thing is the short interest. This is normally classed as a percentage, and it's a percentage of the total number of shares short divided by the total number of shares outstanding. So, you know, simple percentage would be we've got a million shares outstanding, we've got 100,000 shares short, we're looking at 10% would be the percentage of short interest, just 100,000 uh, times, times by 10 would be 1 million, so this percentage. Um, that's really kind of a broad gauge and gives us an idea and kind of, okay, and that's normally the, the bigger picture that everyone looks at. People say, okay, that company's got 25% short interest, and that's considered high, you know, if you've got 20% or above, it's considered a reasonably high short interest. We'll look at the, the ramifications potential of that in a second. The short interest ratio is a little bit more interesting. So the short interest ratio is the short interest divided by the average volume per day. So this really gives us, so let's say we had a short interest of uh, a million shares, and let's say we had the average volume per day is 2 million shares, then obviously the short interest ratio is going to be 0.5. So this gives us a kind of gauge as to how big the short interest is relative to how much volume is done per day. This is more an interesting benchmark, right? Because we now have to start to see okay, how sizable is that? It's all very well saying, okay, against the shares in issue and a percentage against the shares in issue, which is fine. But ultimately, if, if it's very illiquid and there's not a lot of trade going on, and that's a reasonably short position, then we know that they're potentially going to take them a long time to cover, which brings me to number three, which is days to cover, which is the number of shares short divided by the average volume per day. So this is really interesting because if you've got you know, five, six, seven, 10, 15, 20 days to cover, it basically means how long will it take that those shares to cover, or those, those traders to cover those short positions based on the average volume per day we have now. So assuming that average volume per day, if, if they took up all that volume, how many days would it have to cover? So obviously the larger the amount of days to cover, potentially more vulnerable they are. They can't just come into the market and close the position instantly. They're gonna have to work that position over time. So. How does that help us? Well, first of all, before we go to that, where can we get this information from? We can get it directly from NASDAQ if it's on the NASDAQ. We can get it directly from the NYSE if it's on the NYSE. We can go to stocks, um, sorry, charting companies, or should I say websites that offer charts like finviz.com. That's my preferred place to get it. Uh, that gives you the short interest and you can work out the short interest ratio and days to cover if it's not on there and you don't have the premium. Right, so what does that mean for us as traders? Well, as you probably have worked out already, guys, the bigger short interest, the more likely that potentially you've got a short squeeze. Now, there's generally no smoke without fire. Uh, you know, that's a broad sweeping statement, but you could say that if there's a lot of short interest, often many people perceive the company is overvalued and it's going to go lower. And very often that's the case. You've got a downtrend, a lot of people shorting it, the company's struggling, earnings are struggling, etc. The bears are making money, bulls are coming out of it, more short interest coming in. However, what's interesting for us as traders is when we potentially get a short squeeze on. So if we have a high days to cover, we have a high short interest and it looks like that potentially people could be trapped short. If then we see, let's say we see a spike that's pushing up higher, maybe it's going to fresh highs, all these guys are trapped, you know that it's gonna take them 10, 15, 20 days, whatever it is to cover that, it's gonna be a lot more in the real world, then potentially that could add fuel to the fire, driving the stock price higher. So that's interesting, and that's something that potentially we wanna look at if we're trading a share. So if we're trading it, let's say we think of trading short as well, uh, and we see it's a very crowded trade, we might not want to take it because it's ultra crowded. If we want to go long, we might say, okay, well, we're contrarian. If we wait for the right trigger, we could be okay. Uh, and that kind of thing. Now, plus, if there's a lot of people already short, then potentially the selling may only continue from buyers coming out of the stock as opposed to fresh shorts coming in. So we can make our own theories and, and kind of hypothesis from that information. The important thing is it's reported regularly. We can see the short interest, we can see the, the subsequent short interest ratio and the data cover. 
get a thesis from that and decide whether it's something you want to use or not. You know, most of the time it's going to be irrelevant. It's going to, it's going to vary uh, for like some of the bigger stocks. They're going to short interest is going to fluctuate. Not very much. Not very many, many days to cover. You're not going to see a big short squeeze. But at very, very occasionally, you'll see some stocks that are heavily shorted and it's potentially for a big short squeeze. Or if you're looking for something perhaps that's just going to completely struggle and, and, and die and go bankrupt, then you can see what everyone's picking or the hedge funds are picking uh, to short on the flip side and say, well, if they've recognized it as short, maybe it's an opportunity. There's different ways of looking at it and that's up to you from a commercial decision how you want to operate your trading business. These are just some ways that you can get a little bit more information about the stock that you're trading. All right, guys, hope that's helpful. See you next one. Take care. Bye-bye.